Hello. So the first attempt didn't work. I was actually recording in time lapse. So I'm gonna start over again. Um, so this will be part of a series uh, discussing thermodynamics and how or what you can expect uh, in terms of how Chem 16 handles questions in thermodynamics. Uh, again, um, this is mostly a, a, co a condensation of what you can also read from books. So I, I, I would still recommend that you uh, read through yung textbooks natin uh, um, enumerated in the syllabus and to make sure that you would give as much time as you can in uh, solving problems or answering problems in end of chapters. Um, I will also create um, videos for stoichiometry later um, in case meron pa rin kayong um, problems or issues with um, or understanding stuff in stoichiometry. Okay, so let's begin our discussion on thermodynamics by stating that it's a study. Let me just dry this thing up. It's a study of energy. So, of course, but in historically, yung energy na pinag-uusapan sa thermodynamics, and that's why you see the word thermo in there, uh, all have to do with heat. Uh, later on, expanded, of course, uh, through the contributions of different scientists like uh, Maxwell also contributed to the idea with uh, energy coming from electromagnetics. Um, Chem 16 is limited to a very small subset of energy, which is just heat and work. Okay, so again, it's a study of energy. And by energy, uh, what we refer to energy is actually an extensive property, uh, which we have stated at the start of uh, this uh, semester. So, it's is sa mga examples natin ng extensive na property in energy. And we use units for it in terms of joules to pay tribute to the person who contributed the most eh, historically. Uh, joules J or calories, uh, which we abbreviate as cal. So this is a bit, uh, I think this is a different calorie than uh, what you would see in um, food labels. Kasi yung calories dun are 1,000 of these calories. Um, there's also units in BTU for uh, Europe. Uh, we don't use any of those. We just limit ourselves to joules and calories. Later on, we relate them as well to mass and the number of moles. Hi, right. it's extensive. These are the units uh, we use for uh, describing energy or reporting its values. Um, whenever we talk about energy, by the way, in this case, initially, uh, we relate this energy as in a more appropriate um, phrasing of internal energy. Okay. To make a distinction, uh, it's a certain type of energy that we're talking about and not just any type of energy. So, internal energy in this case is a sum of all energies contained inside a system, uh, excluding energies coming from electromagnetics or photonics or whatever. Okay. We emphasize on the word extensive to mean that um, energy is related to the amount of a substance. So if a substance is bigger or has more mass, it means it can contain more energy. Pero um, when we talk about heat, so let me just go back to the term, um, don't pay attention to the barking dog. We have heat. This is the problem with doing things with videos inside um, self-quarantine. So, heat, which we know is also energy, is our more familiar form. So, kanina internal energy, no babalikan ko siya. Uh, before I go there, I first uh, talk about heat. Kasi, uh, by talking about heat, I can relate immediately to the more practical measure of heat which is temperature. So you know that something is hot or it has a lot of heat 
if its temperature is high. Okay? But unlike the, uh, heat, which is a form of energy and is therefore extensive, temperature is not and it's an intensive property. So there is a law in thermodynamics which actually makes sense of that. So imagine if you have a bunch of things that are in thermal contact with each other. So anong sabihin ng thermal contact? Nilagay mo sila in a way na nagkakadikit sila so nagtatransfer sila ng heat sa isa't isa. Okay? If you wait for um, the heat to get transferred completely, so isa sa mga rules yan na alam natin about heat is that the transfer is always from hot to cold. So it's not the other way around. Uh, later natin yung sasabihin kung bakit ganun. Kung meron tayong pagkakataon, that will be in the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so we know that the transfer of heat is always from hot to cold. So you have a bunch of things in thermal contact with each other. The heat would transfer from the hottest object to the more colder ones. Until it would, uh, until a point where all of their temperatures would be the same. So, doon nagka, nagkakatalo yung temperature and heat. Kasi, even though heat was transferred from hot to cold, magkocontain pa rin yung more massive na object, na object dun sa collection mo ng internal contact, ng mas malaking amount ng energy compared dun sa smaller ones. Even though all of their temperatures would be the same. So, kaya temperature is intensive, whereas heat is not. And yung temperature being the same is what stated in the zero law. thermodynamics which interestingly was not the first law that came out interestingly it's not the first law it's actually one of the latter laws when some uh, people figured out na okay there must be some restrictions to the formulation of the succeeding laws na you would have to be the only way you can measure temperature uh, reasonably is for you to recognize that anything in thermal contact with each other would at some point uh, have equal temperatures. That's a very loose um, definition of the zero law of thermodynamics, but it covers pretty much the essence. Okay, so again, temperature is intensive, heat is not. Let's erase that again. I hope I'm not recording in time lapse again. Let me just check. All right. Hoy. Okay. So alam na natin ang heat. I'm gonna go back to internal energy. So, di ba sinabi natin kanina na in thermal contact. This is actually a, a, a pillar of thermodynamics yung idea of interaction because there's no way to understand heat unless it's understood or understand energy in general unless you try to understand it in terms of a process so, marinig nyo yun mula ngayon I would keep on using the term process to mean something that initiates change okay, not to say that change itself is a process but a process is something that would take a system from one state to another and by doing that, it induces a change. So, yung, yung change na yun is a change of state. So, pag sinabi kong process, I'm, I'm um, uh, denoting it that way. So, diba sabi ko, uh, thermodynamics, you can only understand it by understanding interchange. In this case, how heat is interchanged in terms of processes that are possible or processes that are allowed. And yung change na yun would have to require two additional um, uh, discussion ng uh, two additional concepts um, para sa um, formulation natin in thermodynamics and that's system and surroundings. Okay, para sa inyo mga narinig nito before, again, you would know that system is where you actually uh, limit your attention to and everything else other than the system are the surroundings. I'm gonna get, make more meaning to that in terms of um, how we measure heat and how we understand interchange of energy. 
So imagine that you have a glass of water and you're trying to understand, say, how much heat the glass of water has. Or let's say that you're limiting it to um, the volume of water inside the glass. So would you be able to measure the heat uh, inside uh, that glass in, in that volume of uh, water inside the glass? Yes. But only if you also recognize that um, aside from um, uh, th that heat uh, inside the glass uh, containing that volume of water would also leak out into the glass itself into the, whatever it's in thermal, in thermal contact with like the air <clears throat> similarly di ba, alam natin na water actually auto vaporizes so nagpo-produce ng sarili niyang vapor at any temperature so bukod sa heat na nag-leak out meron kaning particles na nag-leak out now, if you were trying to understand the amount of heat inside the volume of water, you cannot exclude those two other things that are happening at the same time. So, but, um, if you know that, if you know how much or uh, ano yung degree no nangyayari yun, yung leak out ng heat from uh, the volume of water into the glass or into the air, and yung leak out ng particles by vaporization, you would be able to quantify how much heat there was inside uh, that volume of water. So, by limiting your attention to the volume of water, you actually understand how it interacts with its surroundings. But in either in, in any case, the, the way you're limiting your measurements to just that volume of water means that you're making that volume of water your system and making everything else the surroundings. And all of the measurements that you would have on your system is also under the context that you understand what happens to the system interacting with its surroundings. Okay? Now, if you imagine this in a larger scale, this is where you limit attention. This is not the system. Anything other than the system. Okay, but if you take a look at it in a larger scale, the, 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 more, uh, the, the larger the system becomes, the larger din dapat yung corresponding uh, uh, consideration ng surroundings. And the limit, of course, is that uh, your understanding the system and surroundings being part. Let me just erase this again. This is the really difficult part. Okay, dry it up. Okay. I'm gonna write it this way. System plus surroundings is equal to the universe. So that's our upper limit. Whatever it is you're trying to understand, uh, whatever system you're trying to understand is actually just a very small portion of the universe. But to be uh, more technical, since you cannot exclude all interactions inside the universe, then assist the system plus the surroundings must be the universe. So this is the more general sense of uh, the, the more general way of making sense of system plus surroundings. So of course, hindi natin yung ginagawa kasi it's impossible to take a look at the surround the universe as a whole. There's no way to observe it as a whole right now. But one thing I want to note here. And I'm going to use this context in the universe is that we're using the universe here as what's something that's called an isolated system. Because this is where uh, all of the power of thermodynamics comes from. That the universe must be an isolated system. And by an isolated system, we mean that... Okay, these two things that must be true for an isolated system. It cannot exchange particles to anything else. And it also cannot exchange energy to anything else. So this makes the universe something that exists and that nothing else is beyond it. Hindi natin kailangan masyadong i-detail yun because we're not facing this. We only need to take advantage of the fact that as far as all of our measurements are concerned, throughout the history of man this is always true 
And uh, first, of course, the first um, evidence natin na tama siya is that in this part where we say there's no exchange of particles is where we get our law of conservation of mass. So, this entire thing that I've written here tells us uh, the recipe for getting the first law of thermodynamics. Which states that very loosely energy must be conserved in an isolated system. Okay, I'm going to make a more formal definition by using isolated system which is not common in books because you, you, can you cannot conserve energy if you're not looking at an isolated system. So it's only conserved inside an isolated system and it becomes true in the case of the universe so yun yung sinasabi ng first law of thermodynamics in books because we're looking at the universe as an isolated system okay our energy conservation principle here is the same as our mass conservation principle so because the universe is isolated either is concerned conserved meaning na hindi ka pwedeng mag-add ng energy sa universe, hindi ka rin pwedeng kumuha. The same way that you cannot add mass or take away mass. Okay? So why is this important? This therefore tells us that energy inside the universe is constant. You cannot have more or less, di ba? Constant siya. Therefore, any process that happens inside the universe, in the different subsystems of the universe, can only have interchange of energy. So, the energy can only be interchanged from one form into another. Yun yung highlight ng first law. You can only change energy from one form into another. And there's, there's no other way that you can uh, get out of that kasi you cannot leak out energy. You cannot also get it from somewhere else. Okay, so, that's our first law of thermodynamics. If I'm going to write it um, more mathematically, I would write it as okay so balik tayo dun sa idea natin system and surroundings and say here na yung energy ng universe the total energy of the universe is just the sum of the energy of any system in the universe plus everything else that is not the system Note how we wrote the first law in this case. We're using E to identify to, again, uh, total internal energy. But now we're also using the symbol na delta to mean that it's actually, uh, we're looking at change. Again, whenever we think about energy, remember, it's almost always more practical to think of it in terms of change, in terms of a process. That would be true later on, even in all of the examples that we would give. So. The total change in energy of the universe is equal to the total change in energy of the system plus the total change in energy of everything other than the system, which are the surroundings. Now again, sabi ko, di ba, total change. Um, since sinabi natin na isolated system, ano ilig sabihin nun? That energy must be conserved. So, in reality, this total energy for the universe is actually equal to a constant. And to be more precise, for it to be conserved, this would have to be zero. Therefore, you cannot have uh, increase or decrease in total energy for the universe. And that's our first um, impression of the first law of thermodynamics as far as Chem 16 is concerned. Okay? So, meron tayo mga change. Yun yung tinitingnan natin. No? Change ng energy, ng in internal energy ng universe does not actually happen. It never changes. But everything inside can. So you can always have an interchange between the energy of the system into its surroundings. Or a system having subsystems. Note our convention whenever we talk about change, we also must talk about direction of change. So I 
want you to remember this because we're gonna go into more details on why we're using that symbol delta in the first place. Okay. Looking at change, we want to hold the direction. We have a convention. So whenever, um, um, whenever we have increase in energy for the system, If the energy of the system increases together uh, along with the process, then we call this endothermic. We call the process that induces an increase in the energy of the system as an endothermic process. Other side, where we have a decrease in energy for the system, we refer to this as exothermic. So that when energy is released, it's exothermic. When energy is gained, it's endothermic. Ang sign convention natin, kapag ka endo, it's plus or positive. Kapag ka exo, it's negative. So, nasabi natin exo endothermic and exothermic. Pag endothermic, positive yung sign ng energy change. Pag exothermic, negative yung sign. Kailan lang mangyayari to? Kapag ka tingin na natin yung delta, Di ba yung ginamit natin delta symbol kanina-kanina lang? As a difference between a final from an initial state. So, yung final na value, uh, yung final na state will have a value for energy. The initial state will also have a value for the energy. And the difference of those values would simply be yung value ng total change. And the way we written it, this way, makes these sign conventions make give sense to these sign conventions so kung mas malaking final kaysa sa initial this difference is positive diba? pag mas malaking final kaysa sa initial then it means na yung system mo from lower energy to higher energy which means na naggain siya ng energy which is exactly what we written here and if the final energy is smaller than the initial energy yung magiging sign natin is negative and when the final energy is smaller than the initial, it means that some of the energy got lost, which is precisely what we wrote here. Okay, did that make sense? I hope it did. Okay, this delta term tells us that how we're looking at internal energy is that we're looking at it as a state function. Okay, so kailangan nyo maalala yan. Isa, isa, isa sa mga importanteng properties ng internal energy. Uh, let me just get some more wipes here. I'm gonna run out of wipes at some point. Okay. So, alam na natin ang first law of thermodynamics. Alam na natin na extensive ang energy and total internal energy. Alam natin na the first law of thermodynamics necessitate that energy must just be transformed and not taken away or are added to the universe. Ngayon, itinin natin kung ano yung requirement ng pagiging state function. So again, final and initial state means that when you take the system from state A to state B, it doesn't really care what happens in between. So ito yung initial. Ito yung final state. Because of the arrow. So if I reverse the arrow, interchange din sila. So, final minus initial would give us delta E. Okay? And delta E, like I said, since final and initial values lang kailangan niya, wala siyang pakailam in between. So, kaya siya tinatawag na state function. Itong dalawang states lang ang nagde-determine ng value. So, when we write delta E, it's actually E final minus E initial. You would see this behavior in all of the properties where we put the delta on. Delta H, which is enthalpy. Delta V, change in volume. Delta S, change in entropy. Lahat yun, makikita natin later on. Okay. So, this is what a state function looks like. What of um, the opposite, which we would call a path, uh, path function. I'm tempted to actually recall yung idea ng functions na to, state function, path functions, and things of uh, 
integral para so para sa inyo na naalala or medyo familiar na sa integrals kapag sinabi nating state function it means na definite yung value ng integral and definite yung integral kasi uh, alam natin yung bounds ng integral so di ba yung integral sign merong a and b ni evaluate natin yung integral inside kapag ka hindi ganun yung case um one of the possibilities is that it's a path integral and it's indefinite Pag sinabi natin path integral, we relate that to the path, path function to mean that if there are different ways of taking the system from point A to point B, there are different ways, then although the delta E would always be the same in this case, all other path functions, so lahat ng hindi state function, would depend on which way you actually choose. So, kung alin doon sa mga ways na yan ang tinignan mo, yun yung magdedetermine ng path function. So, ano example ng path functions? This would be Q and W. So, Q, which we use as a symbol for heat, and W, which we use as a symbol for work. Okay. So, itong dalawang to ay path, in, uh, path functions. So, magde-determine ng value nila, hindi lang yung values nila at B and A. Magde-determine sila based uh, kung ano yung process na kinuha. So, sa work muna tayo kumuha ng analogy. So, you can imagine this uh, being uh, in, a, uh, in an example na you have a heavy box. There are two ways to get it from one position to another. One way is by sliding the box on the floor. In which case, you're just working against friction or you know, part of it would be the inertia because of gravity. Another way would be to lift up the box first, in which case you're working against gravity, and then to walk your way to another position. Uh, let me just uh, pause it for a while. <laughs> 